This is the mercenary Garrison Creed, and you're watching Toilet Side Wrestling Talk. Hi, this is Brad from Pro Wrestling Junkies, and welcome to Toilet Side Wrestling Talk. My guest today hails from the South Bronx and has worked for Fight Club Pro Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Magic, Primetime Pro Wrestling, Heartland Championship Wrestling, A Matter of Pride Wrestling, to name a few. Shared the ring with the likes of Effie, Jared Evans, O'Shea Edwards, Bobby Orlando, Ashton Starr, Caden Pierre, again to name a few. He recently came in at number 418 on PWI's 500 list, which is no small accomplishment. Another great accomplishment was helping create the landmark PTPW's Butch versus Gore event, which highlighted LGBTQ uh, talent. He's the creator of the event Paris is Bumping, which debuts on October 29th at 10 p.m. Eastern on IWTV. So please help me welcome my next guest, standing in at five feet tall, 11 inches, someone who prefers oxygen is their choice of air, <laughs> Billy Dixon. <laughs> What's up, Billy? Hopping. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Was that accurate? I do like oxygen to breathe. And yeah. I also like to drink water. Yeah, you, you get your two parts hydrogen in there as well. Hell yeah. Perfect. Now you're ready to go. Um, so I have a, a question before we get into your you know wrestling career. Um, this is currently... Can you tell me about the Paris is Bumping um, event? Did that come out of the Butch versus Gore event? Um, no. Uh, Paris is Bumping was an idea I've had for the past two years. Okay. Um, and it was going to be an idea I was trying to use at a different company that I used to work for that was for LGBT people that I no longer work for or associate with. Okay. And uh, I never told the promoter, but I've always thought about this since I did ballroom when I was a teenager and I thought about how it was so similar to wrestling. So it's been an idea that's been floating in my head since I was about 14 years old. And now it's kind of coming to life at 25 uh, for the world to see. So that's super cool. Do you still uh, ballroom dance? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, my first experience was uh, like, looking back, it's not as traumatic as it was at that time. Cause you're a teenager, everything is like the biggest, most like important thing that's ever happened oh, sure. in your life. So it wasn't that uh, big of a deal, but I definitely um, have been to balls. I've, I've uh, been a spectator, but as a competitor, no, I have not. Uh, but I have the most respect for the people that continue to perform. You know, it's funny. Um, my wife is a dancer and, you know, I've, I talk to her all the time about how there's huge similarities between wrestling and dancing, the footwork, the choreography, the telling the story without words, you know? Um, so did you, did you find that as helpful? Oh yeah, absolutely. So, um, I think that wrestling, like, I don't like the expression, like this ain't ballet when professional wrestler commentators use it. Cause uh -huh. it's really disrespectful and demeaning uh -huh. because ballet is incredibly physical. I mean, and the same way wrestlers in their older years have pains and, uh, whatever is the same thing with ballet dancers and dancers mm -hmm. of all kinds. It's a physical taxing uh, activity. Um, there's so many similarities it, it, at its root. Both worlds are about people that are outcasts or not really understood expressing themselves through this art form to seek the validation that the world doesn't give them. And that to me is like the most important part. So that's where I see those uh, commonalities. All right. So create to so gain this event started. What did I mean? Did that consume all of your free time? Uh, so yeah. Um, so it was a lot of asking people if they could do it, figuring out how to run uh, a cinematic show during COVID, uh, getting the, the crew, um, acquiring funds, acquiring my own funds. And luckily the funds through uh, many sponsors that sponsored mm -hmm. the show, which I am super grateful for. Sure, I bet. Um, and, uh, figuring out the venue and all that stuff. So I literally was on my phone, my, my poor phone. My poor, poor phone is cracked and broken and I need to get a new one. And my battery is probably like damaged to like the nth degree. But um, yeah. <laughs> Your phone's gonna get uh, cauliflower here. 
Yeah, uh, <laughs> it, it, I actually have rips in my ear because where you have to listen to has cuts from the the, the screen cracking. Um, oh my god. It, because I was ripping and running and dropping my phone all the time, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, it took a lot of time to get this prepared and then to announce to the public that this is a thing, it's happening, and it's going down on IWTV uh, October 29th. And Whoops. Is it... We good? I'm good. I'm good. My <laughs> phone just decided to take a tumble. So what are you most excited for about this? Um, I'm really excited about people looking at wrestling through a different lens and kind of seeing performers perform in a different way and celebrating uh, my community, the LGBTQIA plus community in a way that's a little bit more rooted in our actual back our background and history um, and educating people on a part of my life uh, that I really love and admire as well as like um, uh, some people in the show have had ballroom experience as well. Myself, Candy Lee and Larry Legend all have been in the world of ballroom and it's something that all three of us are incredibly passionate about and i'm really excited to see people's reaction to this this love letter to the two worlds that we love the most and are you going to be performing yes i am wrestling a match against uh mr darius carter in the main event um where we are battling over new school versus old school is experimental wrestling worth it or do we go and we stick to the status quo is paris is bumping a joke or is it for real that's kind of what we're doing here so yes i will be wrestling on my own event okay and so so um how is it how are fans gonna be are fans gonna be there in space or just no fans at all so um so this was a this was taped, so it's done. Yeah. Okay. So, so there were no there were no fans in attendance. There were uh, extras that were spectators, which would have been the significant others. Oh. Uh, or 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 whatever or people's rides or whatever. Uh -huh. But we only had maybe five people sit as spectators, and the rest were p camera operators, videographers, the judges, the bartenders, my uh, myself directing behind the scenes. So it's a very, it's not going to look like a crowd much, but there are people that are playing the role of fans and spectators for sure. So how many people like did you have to bring together for this whole thing? Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't want to get people in trouble okay. because of local ordinances. Sure, of I don't pay attention to them, but quite a few, so quite a few people. But we all were tested. We all were tested and negative. There was one person who wasn't feeling well, who didn't know what was up, so they stayed home. So shout out to them. I won't, you know, reveal who they are because uh, I don't violate HIPAA. Oh, um, that's perfect. And uh, yeah, everybody was negative. Everybody got tested. Everybody was good. And when we weren't filming, we were separated, and everybody was masked up for the most part. So yeah, it was lit. Um, uh, so it it was maybe it was under thirty people. We'll put it that way. That's that's a that's, that's at least thirty phone calls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 30 too yeah. many. Um, oh, can I ask you a question? So like when you, you're directing it, when you go out to the ring to wrestle, who who takes over in those situations? Myself. Oh, really? So it's- Yeah, I'm, I I can direct myself as I'm going. Oh, okay. All right, let's skip, let's go back a little bit. When did wrestling come on your radar? Uh, I started watching wrestling with my grandparents at the, uh, Claremont Projects in the South Bronx on the 10th floor. Um, and we would watch Monday Nitro and Monday Night Raw uh, channel surfing. I miss those days for real, for real. Um, Cause you know, you had to pick and choose, um, but we would watch it and we were really into it. My mom was sick when I was a kid. So sometimes uh, she wasn't home and stuff. So me and my grandparents were, which would watch wrestling every Monday night. It was so cool. Wow, that's great that you you have that memory, you know, that, that like, that you watch, spent time with your grandparents and watched together and had that. Um, mm -hmm. So, and when did you say, you know, what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pursue this wrestling thing? Uh, I was in college, and I didn't want to be in college. I was forced to go to college. I didn't know what I wanted to major in, and I was just in classes that I didn't really care about. And mm -hmm. I was really sad and depressed. And I watched Sasha Banks wrestle, and I thought she was so great. Uh, I watched the live event. And the next day or so, or a couple days, I don't remember, it's a little hazy, I dropped out. Oh, and then okay. I uh, started training, yeah. So, like, how do you find somewhere to train? Like, I, is there a lot of research that goes into that? 
No, I was I was 20 years old. It was Google. Oh, okay, totally. Uh, in retrospect, I would tell any aspiring wrestler to a hundred percent. If you have your favorite independent wrestler or your favorite wrestler, and they're doing interviews like I'm doing, mm -hmm. and if they don't tell you a school and they reach a high level of success, if they're not telling you what school they trained at, don't go to a school that has not been named as credited as uh, really um, uh, accredited as like premier learning don't do it dwight they just take your money a lot of places take your money a lot of places are not healthy environments a lot of places don't educate you correctly so make sure you go to a reputable wrestling school period end of story and do you like um when when did you decide like make your character like along um, like so, the lines of training like w when do you start thinking about that so when i when i first started wrestling i was uh, abused severely and part of that abuse was psychological and I was forced to do a character I didn't want to do. And that included wearing a get mask. So I didn't have any say in that. Um, afterward, uh, about a year and some change later, I was uh, told that I had to come up with my own character. And to me, uh, the Billy Dixon character is really not like Kyle, the, uh, the person. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy Dixon is the male role model that I wish I had growing up. Billy Dixon is like what I I, 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 I aspire to be like. Um, and I fail at, at times, uh, you know, and he is to me like, he's really dope. He's a really cool individual. He's like Spider-Man, but like more hood and more uh, knowledgeable. And he's, he, you know, he, he's got such heart and guts and balls. And I'm a scaredy cat in real life. I don't, I really play it safe, but Billy Dixon is like up there, like, fearless will fight anybody anytime kind of dude is it therapeutic therapeutic having like an alter ego almost like can yes you get no. out feelings that you have like as yourself I, and then with your character the billy dixon character is like a great outlet for me to like feel the rush of an adrenaline and crowds and like mm -hmm. feel super excited um, and for me to like let out aggression and things like that. Um, and it's nice to be like wanted and loved and supported and, and shit like that, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, you gotta be careful to remember that it's not real. Mm -hmm. And okay. you're not actually, my, 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 my legal name is not William. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you got to separate fantasy and reality, but you really got to put the work in um, to stay level-headed, to not get a big head, check your ego, and and really be down to earth. But it is nice feeling that feeling of when you go through a curtain, you don't feel like yourself. And you, for me, I don't feel human. You know, I say to a lot of people, I'm my closest to God when I'm wrestling. I, I've never felt closer to God than when I wrestle. It's such a spiritual experience for me. Do you remember the first time feeling that? Um, or is it something like over time? Like, oh god, this it ha it's happened in small bits, big bits. Sometimes you wrestle, and it's like I'm going to work, clocking in, clocking out. I'm gonna keep it real. Sometimes mm -hmm. you go into wrestle, and it's like, yeah, that was dope. But when you have those matches, those moments, those memories, that happens. And I and and, and I've had them a couple times this year at my show, but versus Gore when I wrestled O'Shea Edwards, who's a piece mm -hmm. of shit. <laughs> um, when I wrestled my best friend Jared Evans. Um, and a couple of days ago at Effie's Big Gay Brunch, when I wrestled oh. uh, the GSC versus uh, uh, GSC alongside fucking O'Shea and <laughs> the Young uh, and Joshua Wavra, um, that was like insane uh, emotion and insane energy I felt from the crowd. And to me, it feels supernatural. It feels divine. It, it, there's something else at play. Is it no, hard to go to sleep after that? Like after like having that for the night? You never go to sleep. When you have a great match, uh -huh. you're wired. So, I mean, you do eventually fall asleep, like for real, for real. But like, yeah. it's hard to go to sleep. It's hard to um to disassociate because you don't want to, you know, we're all trace chasing the dragon of like a great match, great performance, mm. great, great night. We're all chasing that dragon. So you want to hold on to it as much as you can before you like let it go. Okay. So on that subject, if I could only see, or anyone could only see one match of yours, maybe they're, this person's not even a wrestling fan. What, and, and like, maybe this match hasn't been caught on video or whatever. What would be the one match you'd want everyone to see of yours? Ah, damn. That's... 
or some or like an opponent that you work with that like that you could put uh, up a great match. I really like wrestling a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um I'm gonna say this the match I had with my my best friend Jared Evans this September at MV Young's Poly Call Party 2 mm -hmm. in uh Pittsburgh. That's probably one of the best matches I've ever had. Uh and that was a lot of fun. And that was that was probably me at my best. So and everything you can get from a Billy Dixon match that match gave you. So probably that one. Okay. All right. Let me ask you one question. Maybe not Jared Evans. Are it are your non wrestling related friends? Could you beat them in a fight if you had to? Any of them? I can beat anybody's ass. Okay. Okay. Oh God. See, that feels like a superpower. I'd be confident. I wouldn't be looking I, I, down I, I, every I, time if, I walk. If, 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 if I'm in a fight with you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm aiming to kill. Okay. Yeah. I may have to call you if my wife gets out of hand, but. <laughs> Oh God, no! I don't. I don't, no, I don't I, do that. Not like but, that. No, but, no. But you, if, if you if you want to go to a if you want to go to a bar, uh, <laughs> and somebody gives you shit, you know who to call. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna let you go in a, in a moment, but I'm gonna ask you five yes or no questions, not related to wrestling. You can just say yes or no. You can elaborate, or you or whatever you want. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Do you know who Carol Baskin is, or or rather that bitch Carol Baskin? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, for two thousand dollars a month going forward, would you shave your eyebrows? Yeah. Okay. Can you swim with your eyes open? Yes. Okay. Have you ever wished crabs on someone? No. Okay. If you won the lottery, would you build a moat around your home? No. Oh, okay. Well, I just I figured I'd, I'd, I'd find that information out. Uh, <laughs> Billy, Funny. thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I, I have a, a ton more questions because as I'm going, as I'm like talking to you, I'm thinking of other ones. So hopefully uh, you'll you'll come back on, uh, you know, in, yeah, yeah, in the no future. I, this was a fun time. I'll definitely be back. You got uh, it. Awesome. Gosh, I really appreciate it. Um, take care. Stay safe and healthy. And uh, we'll talk soon. Hell yeah, man. Thank you so much. Take it All easy, right. dude. Cool.